Well, I, I, look, I agree with you. And, and the fact of the matter is, as I said at the very beginning of the interview, and I think this is the prevailing theory, and you know, people talk about, well, what would have been Mumia Abu Jamal's motive? I mean, he was a peaceful guy. Why would he have possibly you know, killed police officer Faulkner? And again, the theory is, this is a guy who suffered tremendous racism in the 60s and 70s. And literally, as he said, got beaten up by police officers and saw people pulled over for no reason every day. He was the victim of racism for so long. And he was on the front line lines of this, working for the Black Panther Pan Black Panther Party and also working for MOVE. So there it is at you know three in the morning and he sees a police officer involved in an altercation with his own flesh and blood, his brother. If somebody, if a police officer got into an altercation with my brother, I would go crazy. Of course I would want to do something horrible to that police officer. Well imagine if you've been you know the victim of all sorts of horrible stuff throughout your life, something, you know, prosecutors believe something snapped and he, he, he shot the police officer. Now, the thing about it is, is that in our society, yeah, you can have feelings of, of anger and frustration, but when you cross that line of actually pulling a trigger and shooting somebody, there's still, there's still consequences. And so, I mean, my point is that, I look, just like the O.J. Simpson case, you can believe that that trial was, that the police were corrupt, that they planted evidence, that, you know, all the sort of reasons why that jury found O.J. Simpson not guilty of those charges, you can believe all of that, and still be convinced that O.J. Simpson was the murderer. Likewise, you can be convinced that, you know, that, that Abu Jamal you know, had everything stacked against him, that the judge wasn't fair, that the jury wasn't fair, that you know, it was a racist society, that the police department was corrupt, and yet still believe that he killed that police officer. Now, you know, the question our society has to ask is, okay, does that mean that he should be serving a, a life sentence? Uh, and, you know, that's that's a quite, you know, should he have been convicted given everything else that was going on? I don't know. But to a lot of people, even though a lot of people who think that, you know, all the stuff that happened to him is so unfair and so unjust that at the very least he deserves a retrial. I'm not so sure about that. But I think it's one of the things that we, you know, we can fairly discuss and have a civilized discussion and argue the facts in this case. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at an, an amnesty report called the United States of America, Life in the Balance, the case of Mumia Abu-Jamal, um, and Amnesty International, obviously an organization that opposes the death penalty altogether and lists the United States as a human rights abuser because it is it remains legal, and we are the only developed country in the world where the death penalty is legal. And one of the things that they mention is that political statements were of his were used by the prosecution to ask for the death penalty. Um, in terms of jury selection, they believe that um, the prosecution used 11 out of 15 of its opportunities to remove a member from the jury, to remove uh, African-American members, and obviously in a case as racially fraught as this, you would hope that there would have been um, racial diversity on that jury panel. A, a lot, you know, some folks in our Twitter audience and following, um, they, uh, are, are saying that we need to read uh, more of the amnesty report, and I, well, you know, I, I can say that I am committed to to, to reexamining some some of those claims and, and some of that evidence. Um, and, and yeah, uh, I just you know, look, I agree. I'll you know, I'll take another look at the amnesty report, but I also wish you know, look, what I want to do is get somebody from the prosecution now who can go through some of these claims by Amnesty International and 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 go through them, and and let's you know, have an open, fair discussion from from both sides, and then people can uh, make up their own minds. We're going to pause in just a couple seconds, take another break. On the other side of this break, there's another interesting story out of Philadelphia, the case of Kermit Gosnell. Has the media been deliberately not covering this particular case? We'll explain when Take Action News continues.